Hey hello people welcome to Gurukla I'm Jay so today in this video we will be talking about how to set up a zap application as a proxy so as to intercept the http requests between a client and then the server so without any further delay let's get into the topic so if you have directly landed on to this particular video I would like to tell you that this is a series of video lectures where we discuss about web application penetration testing and in the previous video we have discussed in detail on how to set up a DVWA web application in a Kali Linux. So I will leave the link to the complete playlist in the description box and I recommend you to check that out. So this is an overview of this particular video so first of all we will be discussing what OASP zap is all about just a brief introduction and we will see the visual representation of how http requests are intercepted in the zap application how to set up a zap as proxy so that it can intercept the http request which is going to be a walkthrough session and you can also follow along with me and finally we will intercept and we will actually view certain HTTP request which was exchanged between DVWA web application and then the client. So to give you a short introduction about what ZAP is all about, ZAP is abbreviated as Z Attack Proxy which is developed by OASP which is an open web application security project. So ZAP is a free open source penetration testing tool and as it course ZAP is also known as man in the middle proxy. So because zap is going to be seated in between your browser which means the client and then the web application as depicted in the figure what you are seeing at the bottom so being a man in the middle proxy your zap can able to intercept and it can able to inspect the messages which is being sent between the browser and then the web application and not only that it can also able to capture the packet and you can modify the contents if needed and then forward those packets onto the destination so that we can observe how the web application actually behaves when we send a specially crafted requests and on top of it it can be used as a standalone application so that is a brief introduction of what Z attack proxy is and the detailed documentation is available in the OAS website which you can go through so this is what an visual representation of how our zap is going to intercept our http request so first of all we will have our windows host machine that is what our actual machine is and inside that we have a virtual box application that is vm box is running on and in that vm box we have installed our kali linux virtual machine and inside that kali linux virtual machine we have already configured dam vulnerable web application that is our dwa which is what we discussed in the previous video and now in this video we are going to install zap and when i say zap it is an just web application penetration tool and the better option or alternative for zap is burp suit so in this case we will be discussing on the zap part and finally we need the client which is uh, firefox in our case so as soon as the firefox is sending any request we are expected those requests has to pass through the zap so that your zap forwards those requests to web application and any response from the web application should be received by the zap and the zap should forward that particular response to the firefox which is our client so only then so through this zap application we can able to see all the request and responses which is being exchanged between client and then the server so now we will see how to install zap and then how to configure zap as a proxy so here is what the setup what we have done in the previous uh, section and initially when you fire up your Kali Linux your DVWA doesn't work because for any web application to function properly we need a, a server to host the web application and then the databases to handle all the informations about the web application present so we need to turn on those two services first and the command is like so you can open up the terminal and then you can in service apache 2 start which will actually turn on our apache 2 server inside which our dwa web application is hosted so when it does not throw any error which means that your server is properly turned on and the second service which you have to turn on is the database which is mysql in our case so service start mysql it will ask you for the password go with Kali so once these two services have been turned on we can able to safely fire on our DVWA on the browser 
so it should initially it should be HTTP and when you click enter you can actually able to see that your DVW application has been loaded and we are not going to work anything on DVW as of now so we can just click on security and initially we can click on low and you can click on submit well that's pointless because we are not going to see any uh, vulnerabilities here we are just going to install here so now our web application is all set so we can just clear the screen and now we will see how to install our zap so the command is sudo apt install za proxy so this is the command which is actually going to install the zap application into your kali linux your kali linux will not come zap install by default we will have to install it so key in this particular command and then hit enter so let's just wait so that the installation gets completed so by the time your installation gets completed we will be requiring an additional add-on for our browser so we can just do that in between so you can see that the progress is going on so here we are expected to install a foxy plugin that is our foxy proxy just search for foxy proxy plugin so here you can see foxy proxy standard you can just click on it and you can click on add to firefox as you can see that your foxy proxy is added you can click on ok and when you click on extensions you can actually see that your foxy proxy has been installed here so you can pin this to toolbar for easy access so that it will always be available over here so what we have to do here is we will have to configure this so that your traffic will pass through the proxy setup so yes we can see that our uh, zap application has also have been installed so once this process has been completed you can just go to application windows here and then you can type in zap so that you can actually able to see that your zap has been installed you can just double click on that to fire up the application So that's our Zap application. So initially you can just go on with um, no, I do not want it to process this session. You can click on start and that's how the interface of Zap will look like. And now the second step is and the, when this pop up comes on, you can safely close this. So once your Zap has been installed, which you can see on the right and your web application is present on the left. So you have your web server, I mean your web application and then you have your everything is running on your client and then you have a zap so one thing which we have to perform or to configure is we have to set up zap so that it listens the traffic that is exchanged between the web application and then the server so what we have to do is we will have to first install the certificates in the chrome sorry uh, in the firefox so that your firefox will believe that zap is an application and we can able to send the packets through that so for that so go to tools and you can click on options and in that option search for server certificate it should be inside the networks tab yes we have network server certificate here what you can do is you can just click on save so and you can save this server certificate in desktop on your Kali Linux so I will just save this here so once the certificate is saved so now you can go to the settings on your firefox so here you can go to settings and you can search for certificates so here you will be seeing view certificate just click on that and you can import the certificate so here you can see in the desktop you have uh, zap root certificate and you can click on open and you can check this thrust and then click ok and then ok so now what we have actually done is we have actually installed the server certificate so that uh, your zap is an trustable software so that your firefox will accept the connection through the zap so once that is done we can set up the proxy here 
So once you click on this Foxy Poxy, you can see that there is no proxy set on. Initially, it will be on disabled. So you can click on options. So that will take you to an interface where you can actually configure the proxy. So you can go for proxy tab here and then you have to click on add. And then in this ad, your title can be uh, Zap. As I'm using this particular configuration for Zap, I can click on, I can type in Zap. So host name, uh, it should be localhost or you can type on 27.0.0.1. Why are we giving localhost is because your zap is actually listening in this particular host. As you look over here, uh, you can actually see that your zap is listening on to the localhost and port number 8080. So this is where you will actually have to divert all the traffic which is generated uh, through the Firefox. So port number is 8080 and then all other settings remains as such and you can click on save. So once this is done, so when you click on this zap icon, you can actually able to see that here there is an another option that popped up called as zap. You just click on that. And from now on, all the traffic generated from this particular web application will be diverted through zap so in order to check let me just refresh this page and i will see if that is captured yes now actually you can see that there is an request that is captured over here so that is how we will have to configure OASP zap as a proxy that is between uh, your web application and then the client so now whatever that you do on this particular web application your zap is going to capture all the request and it is going to list it over here now let us try to navigate to one particular page and then you can able to see that that has been captured over here so when you double click on this here you can actually see there is a request and then the response so this is actually going to show you what is the request that has been sent and what is the response that you received for this particular request so that is what we can able to see over here so now currently we are looking at the request what is being sent so this is an get method in http there are different methods we use to pull up the web page from the internet get post, delete, update, etc. So initially or majority we will be using get and then the post method and then uh, it actually specifies the URL which has been sent over here and then it also specifies what is the version of the protocol that we are using and next is like it will also show you from which IP address the request came in that is 127.001 which is our local host and you can also see that there is an cookie information present so this will help us to stay logged in inside our web application so as soon as you go to response you can actually see what is the response that we have received for this so as a response it is an html document or the html code which we have received so as you can see so this is the response what we have received so it shows that it is in the title it is having welcome and then double colon damn vulnerable web application and that is what you are seeing over here so that is mentioned over here so here it is welcome so as you can see here it is welcome damn vulnerable web application and then there is a style sheet which is written in CSS that is helping you to uh, see all the graphics what you see on your web application and when you scroll down you can actually able to see what are all the contents which is present over here and as you can see there is instruction setup reset database and all these things you can see on the left hand side as well so HT ml request has been received as a response and this html code will be received by this particular client and firefox will actually interpret the code and it displays in a way what we are looking at so this is how a web application can be um, configured and then we through zap we can actually able to see the exchanges that is happening between the web application and then the client so now I believe that you might have gotten clear understanding of how to set up a zap as a proxy so that we can intercept the packets.
and so in this session we actually set it up OWASP zap as a proxy and we actually intercepted the HTTP traffic that is exchanged between client and then the server and we just understood how the HTTP requests uh, will look like and how the HTTP responses will look like and we have also seen that the HTTP responses are most of the time the HTML code or it can be any resources which is sent from the server. So up next in the next video I am going to explain how to perform a brute force attack using OWASP zap. Yes your OWASP zap can also be used to perform a brute force attack which we will be discussing in detail in the next video. So stay tuned. I am going to see you in the next video. Until then it's bye from Jay and happy learning.